guys what's up welcome back so we have this pasteurized fuel pellet thing down right um i've shown it in a bunch of videos uh if you have any questions or you haven't seen them check out uh, some of my grow videos or my pasteurized fuel pellet tech video it's a pretty basic process i've been using it forever and you can basically grow any wood loving mushroom with a very little risk of contamination i honestly can't remember the last time i got a uh, contaminated block using my basic recipe catch with pasteurization is your yields aren't as high because it's tough to supplement with pasteurization without really increasing your risk of contamination but uh, that's what i'm gonna investigate in this video i want to start adding some supplements and still doing our basic pasteurization process and see how much supplementation we can get away with because supplements boost your yield, which is what we want in the end. We want more mushrooms. So I have a bunch of bags laid out in front of me here. I have a bunch of oyster grain spawn ready, uh, several different strains. We have some king oyster. We have some black pearl kings. Uh, we have a Michigan oyster strain I got from Gary at Fresh Fungi as a freebie. And I also have some Herichium Americanum. So I figure with all these oysters, like if any mushroom can pull this off, uh, the oysters will, you know. And if the oysters can't outrace the contams, then uh, probably no other species will either. So I figured they'd be a good test. So what I'm going with is my basic fuel pellet recipe I've been using lately, um, which is two pounds of dry fuel pellets. And uh, I'm also adding in two ounces of aspen shavings. And you can do it without the aspen shavings, uh, but what we know about making fruiting blocks is that uh, adding structure to the block seems to, uh, the mycelium likes it, and it seems to uh, increase your yield. I've been adding the aspen shavings lately. They're easy to get. You can get them at any pet store and uh, they seem to be a nice additive to the, uh, to the fuel pellet block. So I'm using all hardwood fuel pellets except for our Herichium Americanum blocks, which those are actually a hardwood softwood blend. I've tested the Herichium on both straight hardwood and hardwood softwood blend pellets, and they do seem to prefer the hardwood softwood blend. So all of the oysters are gonna be going on straight hardwood pellets and aspen shavings. And what I've done is I'm adding different uh, percentages of wheat bran. And I'm using food grade wheat bran, so theoretically it should be a little cleaner too than what you get at like a feed store, although it is more expensive, but we're just doing a small experiment here, so no big deal. So for bran, what I'm going with is what equates to a 2.5%, a 5%, and a 7.5% supplementation by dry weight and that's in relation to the fuel pellets so with the 2.5 percent we added 0.8 ounces of wheat bran 5 percent we added 1.6 ounces and the 7.5 percent we added 2.4 ounces so we're gonna see hopefully we can find the threshold on what how much wheat bran you can safely supplement with and still get away with pasteurization so we're gonna be adding 45 ounces of water at or near boiling for our pasteurization for our bags that only have 0.8 ounces of wheat bran. For our other bags that have 1.6 and 2.4, we're gonna be adding just a little more water. Uh, we're gonna go with 46 ounces. So if you have any questions about the pasteurization process, like I said, uh, there's other videos on the channel. The first video I ever made was just a basic pasteurized fuel pellet tech video, so check that out. And uh, I'm gonna get the hot water going and let's make some mushrooms. Show you guys quickly how I have these bags labeled up. Hopefully I'll be able to keep everything straight. I already have them labeled with the, the strain or species I'm intending on inoculating them with. See, so yeah, I got BPK, we got our Black Pearl Kings, Herichium Americanum back here. Uh, we got our Standard Kings and we also have our Michigan Oyster. So um, what I also added was the um, basically the substrate weights for the different ingredients. So I know that. And at the top, I also put how much water we're adding to each bag. So hopefully that'll help me keep everything straight. And uh, we, you know, the dry weights are varying just a little bit based on the wheat brand, but not that much. And uh, we should have an easy time figuring out our biological efficiency at the end of the grow. 
All set up in front of the flow hood here for inoculation. Our sawdust has cooled down enough and uh, we're ready to pour in our grain. Each bag is going to get one quart of wheat spawn. So we're just going to run through them and knock them up and then we'll get them over to the incubation shelves. I uh, just finished my forearm workout shaking all these bags up and uh, got them on the incubation shelves. So we're looking good. The moisture balance looks good so far. Uh, we got our black pearl kings on top, everything else down below. And I'm just really excited to see how this goes. I've been wanting to uh, try a brand experiment for a long time with this pasteurization tech. And I will be surprised, honestly, if uh, I don't grow any mold here with these percentages, uh, especially like the 7.5% brand. But uh, we shall see. And I have to mention too, uh, just a week or two ago, I did do a separate experiment where I did 10% uh, supplemented brand block. And what I actually did, I had some extra enoki liquid culture and a quart of enoki wheat spawn from uh, Appalachian Gold's enoki culture there. And what I wanted to try is instead of just using hot water and doing the pasteurization to rehydrate the fuel pellets, I actually tried to use liquid culture and just do a cold soak. So I basically hydrated the fuel pellets with liquid culture and then added a quart of spawn on top of that. So at first the block was looking great and uh, I was starting to get some good colonization and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. It's going to work. And then Mr. Cobweb Mold said, uh, no, no, it's not. Not today, buddy. So that block ended up getting super contaminated with cobweb mold and I just chucked it. So you obviously do need uh, the heat. So whether it's going to be enough to, you know, get this brand colonized before we grow contams, we shall see. But uh, we'll just turn the light off on them and see what happens. Update time. We are at a week after inoculation here. And uh, you can see, I don't see any mold yet. Yet. Um, but uh, see our herichium is doing their crazy herichium thing where... You just see a few little spots of white and it looks like nothing's happening, but really you got that wispy mycelium all through there. So, you know, they're just doing their thing. Not too exciting, but I uh, got my black pearl kings up on top here and uh, you can see they're getting nice and whited up. The lighting's a little weird, so it may look a little off color, but I'm not seeing any mold issues yet. This one's looking pretty good. I'd say maybe we're at like 50 to 60% colonization on them. And the winner so far is these uh, Michigan oysters. Like they're pretty much fully colonized. That's uh, this bag here and the one behind it. And, you know, we, they're not really whited up hard yet, but they are fully colonized. Obviously, I'm going to let them go for a while before I try and induce any pinning and in the back here are our king oyster our pleurotus orengi and they're looking pretty good as well they're close to fully colonized this bag in front here has a little dark spot right there that's looking a little suspect but uh we'll see we'll see how they do um but yeah i'm not seeing any mold growth here we're at about 63 degrees fahrenheit for colonization temperature and everything's looking good so far. So we'll probably check back in uh, another week or so and see how everything progresses. So we are at 12 days after inoculation here. And we have some bags that are just about ready to move to fruiting. So I think we're ready to wrap this experiment up. And I have to say I am very surprised. Uh, I'm seeing no signs of any mold growth. Uh, everything seems to be doing really well. You can see our Arechium Americanum are starting to make some sizable primordia. So they're going to be ready any day now. Our Michigan Oyster are just whiten up beautifully now. They're going to be ready to fruit. And same with our Kings back here. Uh, the Black Pearl Kings on top, uh, they're still looking a little sparse kind of wispy in some areas and denser in others this is my first time growing them and i have heard that they do take a little longer for colonization so either that or they might not be loving the wood type but again no sign of mold 
Uh, everything's still looking really good up there. I'm going to turn the overhead light off here and I have a uh, LED light. I want to show you guys too on these Kings. Um, we did definitely get some denser, faster colonization with a higher brand, uh, which is really no surprise. So this block here, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, this one was 1.6 ounces brand. And this one over here was 0.8. So hopefully the camera's picking that up. Uh, this one over here, definitely uh, whited up, more a little more dense mycelium, a little faster colonization than uh, than the 0.8. So this was 2.5% uh, respectively, and this was 5%, each with a pound of grain spawn. So I didn't really see a difference um, with the... Michigan oyster, I mean, they just basically tore tore through it like like it wasn't even there. And the lion's mane, not a big difference either on colonization, primordia formation. Uh, really, I noticed most of the difference with the king oyster, the pleurota serene guys. So I'm really excited, guys. This means we need to uh, push the envelope even more on supplementation and until uh, we reach the threshold. So I'll be doing more experiments with this. But I'm excited to fruit these blocks out and uh, see how our yields turn out. I'll be updating you guys on that. I do want to say, too, that uh, just because I was able to pull this off um, with my in-bag pasteurization method doesn't mean you'd be able to pull this off with any pasteurization method. There's some other methods out there. And I've talked with quite a few growers on this. And it does seem that uh, my in-bag pasteurization method does definitely help keep away the contams much better than say doing like a bucket pasteurization with fuel pellets or, or a different method. So uh, I'm still loving this method. I highly recommend it. And uh, let me know in comments what you guys think. And we'll keep pushing the envelope and see how far we can go.